Welcome back to the show. Well, every parent of any child who's ever thrown a tantrum in a crowded shopping centre is going to admit that there is a fleeting moment where you might consider just walking away. Oh, rather than... already done it. Well, I did do that once. <laughs> rather than dealing with the screaming toddler creating chaos. And here to tell us how to win that war and to tame those terrible tantrums is family counsellor and therapist Karen Phillip, who's written a whole book about this topic, Karen, and I love the, the cover of this book, I've got to point out that the uh, the mother there, that's how I've often felt oh, yeah. when my little ones are doing the tantrum. But it, it is every parent's nightmare, isn't it? Oh, Knowing absolutely. how to gain control. And yes. when you've got your, your kids saying, I want that toy or I want that lolly, and they're digging in, oh. what can you do? Well, if you, you when you were just speaking about being in a shopping centre, mm. okay, that's a classic that's, environment. Yes, actually, that's one of yes, the worst where, times. Where there's an audience. Yes, <laughs> oh, absolutely, and they love it. Everyone's parenting on parade and working out whether or not you're handling yeah. it well. Yeah, the first thing I suggest to parents is not to use the word no, particularly when you're out. That doesn't mean you're giving them in, giving in to them. It's uh, say yes to them. You, I want this, mum. I want that, mum. Yes, I'll actually consider that. I'll think about that and I may even decide to give you that later on or whenever. Doesn't mean you're going to give into it, but as soon as you say yes to a child, they think, oh, I've got a shot at this. But does it make it worse because do they think, yes, I'm getting it, and then when they don't, does it sort of redouble the tantrum and make it even bigger when they don't get the item that they're not, after? Not generally. If you say, yes, I'm considering it, then basically they're on notice. So they're thinking, oh, I may have a shot. Doesn't mean you give in to them at each time. And I suggest occasionally you do get a, what they want, whether it's a, a lolly or a small toy, something along those lines. Not every time. So the child never really knows when they are or they're not going to get it. Mm. But they know they've got a shot at it. Sometimes, though, kids can get into that sort of whirling dervish of emotion that just keeps building and building and building. Yeah. And you just can't reason with them. Right. A little bit like this. E.G. Um, <laughs> what do you do then when you can't reason with them? Well, when, when you're out, it's a matter of simply removing them. I certainly ignore them, absolutely, but sometimes you simply can't. Yeah. So removing them from the situation, if not waiting it out, where you can. When it's at home, it's slightly different. You just separate them. Th they're going to hurt themselves sometimes if they're at home, if they're really being quite violent. But is that a lesson learnt? Once you do it a few times and the child knows they're going to be separated and not get their own way, mm. it's the giving in. Once a parent decides to give in just to keep them quiet and stop them, then that will escalate the next tantrum because if they go louder and longer, then they'll get their own way. I've so been it's told, a of stopping that. I've been told by workers in childcare centres yeah. that often it's best just to let the kid go through the tantrum because yep. you can't reason with them when they're in the throes That's of, exactly right. of their, yeah. their worst possible scenario. You wait until afterwards to actually, when they've calmed down a bit, to, yep. to talk about it. Yeah, them. well, even depending on the age of the child, there's really not much point sometimes even speaking about it when they're very little because once it's over, it's gone. Yep. It's when they're a little older that you can start to discuss that. But it's a matter of setting up the, the consequences for them and that they need to know that prior to anything. And also giving the child, if you see it escalating, you give the child choices. So let the child decide what they're going to do. And once they get to the age of three or four, the children can decide that. Mm -hmm. You put the choices that you want them to choose, so they but they get the one or the other. The so they get the choice. They the own power. that choice. Exactly right. So, so step by step, what should a parent do when they start seeing a tantrum begin? Okay, well, one of the first things if they see, if they're out in public, it's, it's negotiating with the child to a degree. And it's like, sweetheart, I can see you want this or that. And yes, I may consider giving that. So the yes word is a really good one. If it's at home and they start, um, they start to escalate, it's a matter of choices. Okay, well, sweetheart, you can do this and that's going to happen. Or you can do that and this will happen. Mm. Whatever, whatever you choose is fine with me. Is smacking ever okay? No. I don't believe physical force against anybody, particularly a little person, is ever a good idea. That's generally caused out of frustration when parents really aren't aware and don't have the knowledge of what else to do. But if you, if you know what to do, then smacking really is not needed, never needed. Okay. Great advice. Mm. Good on you, Karen. Thanks for coming in.